بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم الصلاة والسلام على سیدنا محمد و على آله الطیبین الطاهرین Today I'm going to speak about two important points one of which is Al-Kufr and the other one is Al-Shak. Kufr in English can be translated on belief, infidelity. Shak, doubt. Imam Ali, in these two wise sayings or aphorisms, will make clear the true nature of Kufr or unbelief. In other words, who is to be called kafir, unbeliever, from the viewpoint of Imam Ali? And who is to be called dubious or doubtful? Al-Kufru Vagal Al-Kufru Ala Arbi Ida'im. Kufr, infidelity or unbelief is based on four pillars or foundations. What is made by pillar? Root cause. Root cause. In other words, the root causes of kufr or unbelief are four in number. Four in number. Kufr literally, please let me explain the literal and technical meanings of al-kufr. Usually, any Islamic term can be defined in two ways, literally and technically. Kuf is derived, is, is the root. Kafara is the past word. Kuf literally means to hide, to cover, like sowing a seed in the soil. In other words, kufr means hiding, denying, or covering the truth. Like the cloud which covered the sun. Then we will all be in darkness. Denying or hiding the truth means denying light, hiding light. The opposite of light is nothing but darkness. A kafir is one who is in darkness because of hiding the truth. Now, kafir is a person who does not believe in Allah or God, first of all. Muhammad Jawad al magniya not al mughniya in his commentary upon this wise saying, says, Al-Kafir عند المسلمين أسناف Kafir, unbeliever or infidel from the viewpoint of Muslims are of different kinds. Minha an يجحد الخالق من الأساس A person who denies God من الأساس essentially basically fundamentally is called kafir any atheist from the Islamic point of view is kafir a person who denies Yajhada means from juhud. Juhud means denial. Juhud. Denial. Who denies, rejects God is kafir. Oh, you may not be from the Islamic point of view. A kafir is not just who does not believe in God, even if he believes in God. But denies one of the fundamental principles of Islam. Al-Yawmul Akhir, the day of judgment, the day of resurrection. Still, he or she is a kafir. So, it doesn't 
the kafir is not just one who denies Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is, we should be very careful to understand, to interpret or define any genuine Islamic term as properly and as, as exactly as possible. So, a kafir is first of all an atheist, one who does not believe in God, first of all. Is that all? No. Or one who denies life after death. Al-Barzakh. Not Barzakh, the intermediate world. The interspace. The world between this world and the next one. The posthumous or after this world before the day of resurrection, Al-Barzakh. Oh, you may know Bihima man, oh, a kafir may believe, may believe both in God and the day of the judgment, but denies the nubuva, the prophethood of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Of course, sorry, sorry, a Christian might know nothing about Islam, but might know nothing about this. But if we discover the truth, discover the truth, discover the truth, but if we reject it intentionally without any cogent proofs or reasons, such a person is called jahid, denier, denier, denies intentionally. So, there might be a person who believes in God and who believes in the day of resurrection, but who denies the Prophet of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa Or, if a person associates a partner with Allah, partner, sharik with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a mushrik is kafir, a kafir. Oh, or a person who attributes or ascribes sahiba, a partner, another God, or a son to him. While in the chapter of Surah Al Ikhlas, Lam Yalid Walam Yulad, according to Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never begets. Nor is he begotten. Lam yalid wa lam yula. Wa min ha'an yughali fi makhlugi. If a person, even a Muslim, exceeds the proper bounds, like al-ghulat, the extremists, with regard to Imam Ali alayhi salam. Even if he be an extremist, who is an extremist? Who exceeds the proper bounds or limits? Those who describe certain attributes, for example, to, to the Aimah, to one of the Imams, right? Whereas they should not do that. Imam Ali, is a human being, was a human being, but he was Imam, a divinely appointed or designated leader. That's all. Imam Ali's eloquence, his power, all were endowed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon him. If anyone attributes or qualifies, describes any of the aimah, any of the imams, even with one attribute which is specific to God, that person will be kafir. Whatever the aimah do issues forth from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
all the prophets, including the lost prophet of Islam, all the I am, but human beings, the lost one, human being, they are all human beings. Whatever they have belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of course, they are perfect examples, perfect human beings, but they have nothing of their own. Oh, Yansabul Adali Ahl al Bayt al Rasul. Anyone who displays enmity, hostility towards the household of the Prophet, they are kafir. According to Al Makhniya, they are kafir. Yansabul Ada displays enmity, hostility. Li Ahl al Bayt al Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Those who are enemies of the household of the Prophet. Again, is that all? No. No. وَمِنْهَا أَنْ يُنْكِرَ ضَرُورَةَ الدِّينِيَّةِ ثَبَتَتْ بِإِجْمَاعِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ Anyone who denies any essential or fundamental act of worship, any fundamental act of worship as proved, as approved, as confirmed by all the, by the consensus, by the unanimous agreement of the Muslim, of the Muslim jurists or scholars, like what? Like some fasting and the prayer. Fasting and ritual prayers are two religious obligations. It is incumbent, it is obligatory upon every adult, every Muslim to pray five times a day and to fast during the month of Ramadan. The month of fasting. Anyone, if anyone and exceptionally denies, rejects any Muslim, as al iyazu billah, God forbid, say no, I reject it. While in the Quran, kutiba alaykum as siyam kama kutiba ala lazina min qablikum la'allakum tattahun. Fasting was prescribed for you as it was prescribed for the previous peoples. Wajib, obligatory. Wa'aqimu salah. The Quran says, keep up prayer. Wajib, it is a command. Wujub, wujub means being obligatory. Wajib. Anyone. Zaruriyat or zarura. Zaruriyat is the plural. Literally means necessity. I mean that any oblig obligatory act of worship. And وَتَحْرِيمَ الْقَتْلِ وَالسَّلْبِ وَالنَّهْ Anyone who denies anyone who denies what? The prohibitedness the forbiddenness of murder. Murder. He's a kafir. Murder. Murder is prohibited in Islam. No one is allowed to murder anyone else without any, unless, unless, but as for capital punishment, that's something else. That's something else. For example, if anyone kills the son of somebody else, right? He will be put on trial and he should be retaliated against it according to the legal law of Islam, for example. Although, although the Quran says, if we forgive him, many of our sins will be forgiven. I'm not going to go into it. Anyway, anyway, cut. For example, if anyone fires at some people in the street, no, it is forbidden in Islam. No. Killing one person is killing the whole of humanity without any reasonable 
Nobody has the right to kill anyone. No. Islam rejects it. Killing, murdering, no. no. Tahrim, kafir. If anyone rejects it. Wassal, theft, robbery, burgling, forbidden in Islam. Wannahb, robbery, plundering, the property of other people. Haram, forbidden. Forbidden in Islam. So a kafir is one who can be qualified with any of these characteristics or with all of them. So, as Imam says, al kufro as I had said before, al kufro ala arbi'i da'ayim, therefore, unbelief or infidelity is based on four pillars. What is meant by a pillar is on four fundamental root causes, one of which, as I say, uh, kufro. This is the first one. And the second one, at ta'amuk. Ta'amuk means uh, probing into something, probing into something. Or investigating something very deeply. But in this context, it means uh, probing into something unreasonably. It means that probing into something which is beyond the grasp of my understanding beyond the range of my understanding about the essence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God. We cannot probe into the essence of God. We can't. We are limited in terms of understanding. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is unlimited. Neither the prophets, nor the a'imma, and nor we. We cannot understand the innermost reality of God. So probing on into the edge of Allah is a waste of time. Is a waste of time. We should not strain our minds or mental energy or mind in this regard. At Ta'amuk as Imam Ali says in Sermon 91, Wal Murad bi ikhtaham al sudud al madhruba dun al ghaib kal bahthi al zatilla subhanahu wa kunhu. It means that what is meant by ta'amuk is breaking into. Breaking into, into the hidden, closed doors. There are certain secrets, certain hidden mystery, mysteries, right? In front of which, there are many doors, closed doors. We cannot open the doors to break into the invisible world. Like the essence, the divine essence. The essence of God, the glorified. So it will be a waste of time. It is no use probing into the essence of God to understand what is the essence of God. No, we can't. As Imam Ali says in Sermon 89, in the Rasikhina, those who are, I mean that, firmly grounded, firmly grounded in knowledge, are those whose acknowledgement whose acknowledgement to not knowing the details of the invisible prevent them 
prevent them from trying uselessly to open the hidden closed doors. The Ahmed themselves acknowledge they, that they, they cannot understand those hidden secrets which they are not allowed by Allah to understand. That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praised them because of their admission or acknowledgement in this regard. So, fi surati Ali Imran. Can you give me a copy of the Quran, the Arabic Quran? That's it. Fi surati Ali Imran. Ali Imran, the family of Imran, is chapter 3. Fil aya in the uh, in verse, in verse 7, in verse 7, there is an ayah in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prays Rastikhun ar rastikhun fil ilm ar rastikhun fil ilm Thank you very much. Apologies. Ali Imran. Right. Seven. Yeah. Right. وَالْرَاسِخُونَ فِي الْإِلْمِ Those who are firmly grounded in knowledge يَغُولُونَ They say آمَنَّا بِهِ كُلٌّ مِنْ عِنْدَ رَبِّنَا We believe in the book. The whole of it is from our Lord. So الْرَاسِخُونَ فِي الْإِلْمِ those who are firmly grounded in knowledge is mentioned fi surah ali imran chapter 3 ayah 7 so there are so atamu so we should not waste our time to probe into that which is beyond the grasp or the ken of our understanding ken k e n is a scottish word but it is used in english beyond the can, beyond the range or the main of our understanding. Like Zatullah, the essence of God. So we should not probe into that which we were not allowed, permitted, or when it is not religiously obligatory on us to do that. What shall we do? We should try just to focus on those attributes through which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describe themselves and on the authentic and reliable traditions or hadith as narrated from the Prophet and the Aima alayhum as -salam. That's all. Beyond that, we don't need to do anything. Of course, the Satan, Satan, sometimes prompts us, insinuate or instigates, instigates us to probe, to be curious in certain issues which we were not instructed, which we were not commanded by Allah to probe into. To at tawhid by Saduq. There is a great book called at tawhid the oneness of God, right? Which com comprises, comprises or includes is, uh, a large number of hadiths on Tawheed, on the various aspects of Tawheed or Divine Unity. After the Quran, we can refer to that book. 
in order to know about God, that's all and no more. Still, we cannot understand. So, the divine essence is ineffable, unknowable, forever, to eternity. We should focus just on those attributes through which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes it themselves. That's all. And the so I explained Kof, I explained the first uh, root cause of Kof is a Ta'amuk, as I said, Ta'amuk is the first one. The second one is a Tanazo, uh, sorry, uh, a Ta'amuk is the first root cause of Kof, as I explained, Ta'amuk. So it means that. We should not probe into certain things which might lead to cough, which might lead to cough. Okay, I don't know. Sorry. Or if a person said, okay, I can't, I can't know the essence of God. It is unknowable. But God is a knowable in other ways. Other ways. Through what? Through the clear proofs for his existence in nature. There are so many proofs for existence in nature. This is the way that we can know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's in other words. But we should stop thinking about his true essence. That's all. Because ta'ammu, probing uselessly, might lead to unbelief. This is in regard to those who are not wise enough to understand that the essence of God is unknown. Imam Ali says that at ta'amuk in this regard is one of the root causes of kuf as explained by me in the beginning of my at the beginning of my lecture. So this is the first one, at ta'amuk, the first root cause. The second one is at tanazo. What is tanazo? Tanazo means arguing, disputing regarding God without knowledge, without any guidance or without any illuminating book. Like Ayah, like Ayah 8, verse 8, Fi Surat al Hajj, in chapter 20. To, if you refer to chapter 22, you will see what God says in this regard. So we should try to dispute in God without any knowledge. As the Sunni theologians or al ashairi did, the early Sunni theologians dispute about God as wrongly, as improperly as possible. So what we should do should be based on knowledge, correct knowledge, based on correct and proper guidance, based on the Quran primarily. Tanazo. There are some people who usually, or who might dispute, with each other, for or against, without any grounding, without any logical basis, with no knowledge. This is the second root cause of kufr. Those who know nothing, and who do not know that they know nothing. Start disputing without achieving any correct conclusion. Out of ignorance, blindly. This is the second root cause of kufr, unbelief. 
We can find a lot of examples in this regard. As Zeich. Zeich in English means deviation. Those who deviate from the right straight path. Those who deviate from the truth. Will come to deny God. Those who are blind to the truth. Will come to deny God. Those who act or, or do at a whim. At a whim. They try to believe what they like. And to deny what they don't like. At a whim as we say in English. On a whim. Today I like to do this. In two hours I don't like it. Now I have an idea. Two hours later I will change my idea and adopt another one. Fat. Passing fats. As Zaykh Huwal in Hiraf. Zaykh is deviation. Turning away. Anil haq from the truth. Alladhi yashmelun. Jehud Billah, which includes, which consists in denying God. Wal Nasbu Wal Mughalat, Nasb, which will lead to enmity towards God, towards the Aimma. Wal Mughalat, which will lead to exceeding the proper bounds or limits, like Al Ghulat, the extremists, with regard to Imam. Ali. This is the third root cause. What is the fourth one? The fourth one is Ashigaq. Ashigaq. Ashigaq means dissension. D I double S E N S I O N. I honor the Philhaq. Those who are hostile, who are against the truth. Shaka. In Karul Haq, as Shaqah means deny the truth. In Adan Mabuka Baratan. In Adan. Hostilely, out of enmity, out of hostility, out of pride, as Shirah. And this as Shirah applies to those who deny as Zarura. As Zarura, for example, the necessary or the fundamental essential acts of worship, as I said, like as Salat, as so and so on. So, <coughs> Imam says, therefore, فَمَنْ تَأَمَّغَ لَمْ يُنِبْ إِلَى الْحَقِّ Therefore, anyone, this is about the first root cause, anyone who probes into that which he should not probe into will not achieve the truth. For example, if we probe, if we delve, if we think deeply about that which we should not do, like the unknowable essence of God, we will not achieve the truth. وَالْمَعْنَى ذَاتِ الله. If anyone who thinks, thinks about the essence of God will get puzzled, will get bewildered, will get perplexed during his whole life, during his whole life, during the whole period of his life, never, never, never. How can a fish comprehend the whole ocean? We can't. 
So we should stop thinking about the essence of God, the innermost reality of God. No. No one. Even to the last, that person will remain, continue to remain perplexed, bewildered, confused, because it is not possible. And he will never come to his senses. He will never come to his senses. Why? Because the limited cannot comprehend the unlimited. We are limited in terms of thinking, in terms of mental faculties, in terms of power in every respect. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is absolute. His as absolute essence knows no limits, knows no no limits. mahdud la yudrik ghayr al mahdud, because the limited cannot comprehend the unlimited. This is what Imam Ali says. Where can we find such deep points or sayings? I am familiar with Augustine with. Christian theology, apophatic theology, and so on. Neither Saint Augustine nor Saint Thomas Aquinas. Saint Thomas Aquinas, one of the most famous Christian theologians, was deeply impressed by Avicenna. I might have translated his essence and being into Persian. Thomas Aquinas, Saint Augustine, and so on. Saint Ansel. A famous Christian theologian, he says, Kerudo, Kerudo ut intelligam. I believe so that I may understand. Islam says, no. First think and then believe. Not first believe and then think. This is what Saint Anselm says. Woman Kathora Neza Ohu Bejahli Dama Amahu Anitha. A person who always disputes, who never tries to accept the truth, just disputes. Imam says, a person who disputes out of ignorance, Dama Amahu, he will all will always remain to be blind to the truth. Always. He will be internally blind. A person who just disputes, who just argues out of ignorance, with no knowledge, with no insight, and nothing. Just disputes, like the common people, the street people, or many other people, even many educated, even many professors. A professor might be expert in a field of science, but it does not, it doesn't mean that whatever he says is completely correct. لا شيء وراء الجدال والنغاش بالجهل إلا الحيرة والظلال. Any disputation, any argument, based on ignorance, based on ignorance, is nothing but puzzlement. حيرة puzzlement. Perplexity is nothing but being perplexed, bewildered, confused, and zalal and misguidance. What is jah? Jah means not knowing. Ignorance. But, Amma jadal ma'al ilm bil haq wa ikhfa'uhu huwa nifaq. What is hypocrisy? But if anyone disputes, if anyone disputes, 
in spite of knowing the truth in spite of knowing the truth and because of hiding the truth it is nefar nefar duplicity being double faced hypocrisy there are some who know the truth who know the truth but who, but who try to hide to hide it to conceal it out of enmity out of prejudice such a person is called hypocrite and what he does is called hypocrisy nifaq but kisbun muqtamad and definite falsehood kis then imam says anyone who deviates deviates from the path of guidance from the right path sees whatever is good as evil and whatever is evil as good la ilaha illallah we can find lots and lots of examples whatever is evil he sees as good and whatever is good he sees as evil lying treachery exposing oneself exposing oneself in the worst manner fashion it's a fashion under the name of fashion under the name of being modernized and so on and so on being a fashion model in order to get slim even by eating cocaine taking cocaine yeah by eating cotton balls cotton wool in order to be get sorry slim enough to wear the dress and so on and so on وَمَنْ شَاغَ anyone who feels hostile to the truth is a person who revolts against the truth anyone who is an enemy of the truth anyone who fights against the truth and who sticks to falsehood it means that he revolted against the truth and he is riding an untamable horse untamable horse salaka masalik tahlika he is rushing towards perdition destruction ruin and he will never find relief and way out ay tamarrada ala al haq fa qad rakaba al sa' wa al salaka masalika tahlika wa lan yajid farjan wa la makhraja and he will never find relief relief salvation and no way out so according to imam ali al kufr which literally means let me recap al kufr literally means a hiding concealing and technically means anyone who as i explained denies god who does not believe in god or one who deny the prophethood of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam one who associate a partner with god one who associate a god 
with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the partner with God, another God with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one who ascribes, attributes a quality of God to any other one, to a makhluk, for example, an iyasa billah to another person, to imam and so on. Oh, one who shows or displays enmity towards the Ahlul Bayt, the Ahlul Bayt Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Oh, one who denies one of the fundamental necessary rulings or acts of worship of Islam, like a song, like fasting, like ritual prayers, and so on. Oh, one who considers permissible murdering, murder, robbery, armed robbery, and so on. And uh, al kuf is based on four root causes. Pillar or pillar, what, what is meant by pillar or column uh, in this regard, in this context, is a root, root cause. One, a ta'ammu, thinking about what we should not think, about the essence of God. It is a waste of time, we should not strain our minds in this regard. Because it might lead to kuf. A tanazo, a jeda, disputing, disputing uselessly, without any knowledge, without being knowledgeable, without being properly guided, based not on the illuminating book that is the Quran and so on. A zayh deviation is another reason for kufr. And shirah, enmity, hostility, and so on. If you permit, I would like to stop at this point. Hopefully, uh, next week, uh, inshallah, I'll explain a shak or doubt. And the root causes of doubt. I mean, that, uh, I mean that what are the main causes of a shak or doubt, inshallah ta'ala. Next week, inshallah ta'ala. So